Hello boys and girls, this is Mr. Kizik, and first we're going to look over your homework that you had due for today. So, you have these problems 4 through 7 here, and like I said last class, what you want to do in order to solve these problems is to determine what's given to you, and then use the properties of parallelograms to determine how to set up the problem. So number 4, with the two expressions that they gave you, these were opposite sides. And what we know about opposite sides? Well, they are congruent. So I set them equal to each other and solve for x. Then I'm going to go back in the problem and see what am I trying to actually solve for. They want you to find KL, so then I just plug it back in and I get KL is 26. For number 5, they gave you AC and EC. Now if you notice in the picture, you wouldn't set them equal to each other because EC is a part of AC. It doesn't make up the whole thing. So it wouldn't make sense to just put them together here. Uh, so what you would have to do though is, if you notice, EC is half of AC. So I would have to multiply EC by 2 and then set it equal to AC and solve for X. For number 6, uh, the angles that are given to you are consecutive angles. So we would add, add them together and set it equal to 180 and solve for X. For number 7, the angles that they gave you were opposite angles, so we set them equal to each other. But the problem wanted you to find the measure of angle V. So what you would have to do is either plug in your value of X into either angle W or angle Y. In this case here, I did angle Y, plugged it in and got 43. And then the relationship between V and Y is that they are consecutive angles. So I'm going to take 180 minus 43 and get 137. And that, boys and girls, was your homework. So today's lesson is still within the same packet, and if you turn to the page that says, see, there you go, um, that says proving parallelograms in the coordinate plane, All right? So hopefully, you now you remember what a coordinate plane is. Remember, a coordinate plane is points x comma y, right? Now, what we're going to be looking at today, there are three different methods to prove that parallelograms in the coordinate plane are either parallelograms or not. Now, for your upcoming grade assignment and your homework for tonight, I will be forcing you or asking you to utilize all three methods here, or I'll be telling you which method to use. Now, when it comes time for your test and for future use, I really don't care which method you use, right? So we'll, we'll look at them and see what, what we get. So, first method here. We can prove that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So if we prove that the distance from A to B is equal to the distance of D to C, and we also prove that AD is equal to the distance of, from BC, then the figure is a parallelogram. So what formula do we use? Now, if you think back to chapter one, if you remember when I gave you two points and you wanted to find the length between those two points, we use the distance formula. And if you recall, the distance formula was d equals the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. The second method is we can prove that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So if we prove that line segment AB is parallel to line segment DC and line segment AD is parallel to line segment BC, then it's a parallelogram. Now, if you remember in algebra, what do we utilize to determine if two equations or two lines were parallel to each other? We use the slope formula. And hopefully you remember the slope formula is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay. Most students when you know I, when you are given the option of what method to use, most students choose the slope formula because well everyone likes the slope formula. And then the last method that you can use is proving only one pair 
of opposite sides are both congruent and parallel. So in this case here, you only pick one pair of opposite sides. It doesn't matter which one. Let's just say, for example, we pick A, B, and D, C. If we prove the distance from A, B is equal to the distance from D to C, and we prove those same two lines are parallel to each other, then it's a parallelogram. So in this case here, we use both the distance and slope formulas. And again, what makes this one different is that you only pick one pair of opposite sides here. You don't necessarily, or you don't need to do both pairs of opposite sides. So let's look at an example of each method here to see how it works. So if I look at number one here, number one says determine whether the figure is a parallelogram using the distance formula. So what I usually tell students is before you start utilizing the formula, draw a picture out for yourself. So draw what may be a parallelogram. And then what you want to do is start at one corner, doesn't matter where you start. Personally, I like to start in the upper left hand here. And then you either go in a clockwise or counterclockwise movement to fill in the rest of your corners. I personally like to go clockwise, so A, B, C, D. What makes this important is because when I'm comparing the opposite sides, because let's think about it. Normally, you probably would have written it as A, B, and then C, D, like this instead. And that makes sense because that's how you read, normally from left to right. But then I get a different pair of opposite sides here, and that's not the correct one. So again, draw your figure, start at a corner, and then go either in a counterclockwise or clockwise position with the points. So now what you want to do is you want to pick a pair of opposite sides. It doesn't matter which one you start with. We'll start with A, B, and D, C. So since we want to use a distance formula, we got to do a distance from A to B. So A, B equals the square root of uh, negative 7 minus 1 squared plus 4 minus 2 squared. Then do the math. Negative 7 minus 1 is negative 8. Negative 8 squared is 64. Uh, then I do 4 minus 2 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. And then 64 plus 4 is the square root of 68. I could go into the calculator and figure out what the decimal equivalent is, but this is fine right there. I don't need to do any more. And now I want to do DC. So the square root of, um, let's see, DC, it would be uh, 1 minus 9 squared plus negative 6 minus negative 8 squared, which hopefully you know that's going to be minus negative plus. All right, so do the math. 1 minus 9 is negative 8. Negative 8 squared is 64. Negative 6 minus a negative 8, or plus 8, is 2. 2 squared is 4. So I get the square root of 68. A, B, and D, C are the same lengths. So because they are the same value here, I have to try the other pair of opposite sides. If these were different, if, if I got A, B, and D, C were different lengths, I'd be done, and I would say no, not a parallelogram. But because they are the same, I have to try the other pair of opposite sides. So now I gotta do the same thing here for A, D, and B, C. So A, D is gonna be the square root of negative seven minus one squared plus four minus negative six squared. Do the math, negative seven minus one and negative eight squared is 64. Four minus negative six, which is really plus six is 10. 10 squared is 100. So I get the square root of 164. That's okay that this number is not the same as A, B, and D, C. Because again, we're comparing opposite sides. Opposite sides can be different lengths here. The two pairs of opposite sides can have different lengths here. 
So now we want to see, now we got to do BC, and we want to check, do we get the same value? So when I do BC, I would do 1 minus 9 squared plus 2 minus negative 8 squared. 1 minus 9, negative 8 squared, 64. 2 minus negative 8, 10 squared, 100. Square root of 164. So when I did the other two pair of opposite sides, I did get the same length. So because I got the same length for each pair of opposite sides, my final answer is yes. This is a parallelogram. Okay. So again, to do any of these problems, draw your figure, start at a corner, label it, and either go in a counterclockwise or clockwise position with whatever corner you start with, and then pick a pair of opposite sides to do and see well what happens when you know you do the math. All right, let's skip to number three here to look at the second method. The okay. Nope, nothing to see there. All right, <laughs> um, so maybe you just saw what's going to happen here, but um, let's do it anyway. So this second method says determine whether the figure is a parallelogram using now the slope formula. So again, I'm going to draw my figure. We'll label it W, X, Y, Z. So now what I'm going to do is use the slope formula by comparing opposite sides. So again, doesn't matter which opposite side you pick. Let's pick W, X, and Z, Y. So let's do the slope of W, X. W, X is going to be negative uh, 4 minus negative 6 over negative uh, 7 minus 1. We do the math. Negative 4 minus negative 6 or plus 6 is 2. Negative 7 minus 1 is negative 8. And remember, you always want to simplify your fractions. So this simplified is negative 1 over 4. <clears throat> now let's do zy. So zy would be negative uh, 12 minus negative 13 over 1 minus 5. Negative 12 minus negative 13 is 1. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Now I looked and compare, are these the same slopes? Yes, they are. Just because, remember, the negatives on the bottom doesn't mean it's different. It's a negative. So because we got the same slope, we have to try the other pair of opposite sides. Remember, just because this works doesn't mean necessarily the other pair of opposite sides works. So WZ here is going to be negative 4 minus negative 12 over negative 7 minus 1. Uh, negative 4 minus negative 12 will be uh, 8. Negative 7 minus 1 is negative 8. This simplified is negative 1. And now we want to check xy. So with xy here I would have negative 6 minus negative 13 over 1 minus 5. Negative 6 minus negative 13 is 7 1 minus 5 is negative 4. That's already simplified. And if I look here, these were different. So my final answer is no, this is not a parallelogram. This is why it's important to do both pairs of opposite sides if the first one does work here. All right. So in the case in this problem here, and this is why I wanted to show it to you, we picked WX and ZY first. Because we picked those two sides first and they did work, we had to try WZ and XY. But let's just say you picked WZ and XY first. You would have gotten negative 1 and negative 7 fourths. Obviously, they're not the same, so you would say they're not congruent, so therefore you would have been done and you would say no, not a parallelogram. Sometimes with the problem, it's just a matter of luck of the draw. Right. Last method we'll do here together. This one, again, same thing, proving it's a parallelogram. But now we're using the distance and slope formulas. So what you want to do is again draw your figure. J K 
LM. Now you want to pick one pair of opposite sides. And this one, this is what makes this method different. You only need to do one pair of opposite sides, but you got to use both formulas. So we'll see in a minute here. Let's say you pick JK and ML. So JK. And with this method, it doesn't matter which formula you start with, whether a distance or the slope. Most students like to deal with slope first because it is you know, the easier of the two formulas. So we'll do that. So I would have negative 2 minus 1 over negative 9 minus negative 5. Negative 2 minus 1, negative 3. Negative 9 minus negative 5, which is negative 4. Simplifies down to 3 fourths. ML. ML is going to be negative 7 minus negative 4 over negative 3 minus 1. Negative 7 minus negative 4 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. 3 fourths. So these were the same. So because they were the same, I have to now do the distance formula for the same two pairs of sides here. So jk, do the distance formula there. We would have negative 9 minus negative 5 squared plus uh, negative 2 minus 1 squared. And then, yep, so then we just do the math here. I'll just do it to the sides because of room. So I would have negative 9 minus negative 5 is going to be uh, negative 4 squared 16. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3 squared 9. Square root 25. Now, yes, square root 25 does simplify, but that's not the point here. We can just keep it like that. And now let's do ML. ML is the square root of negative 3 minus 1 squared plus negative 7 minus negative 4 squared. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4 squared 16. Negative 7 minus negative 4 is negative 3 squared 9. Square root 25. So I got the same distances for JK and ML, so therefore my final answer is yes, it is a parallelogram. Alright, so that, boys and girls, is how you prove whether a parallelogram in the coordinate plane is a parallelogram or not. Three different methods. So again, for your homework, which your homework is going to be in the same packet here, numbers 10, 11, and 12. So for your homework and the grade assignment coming up, you're going to be given problems and it's going to tell you what method to use. It says right here, distance, slope, the distance, and slope formula. Your setup's still going to be the same way. Draw your figure, pick a corner, and then label it, either going in a counterclockwise or clockwise position, and then pick a pair of opposite sides and utilize the formula. Okay. After this, uh, this time here, then when it comes to time for the big test, and I ask you the same problem, I don't care which method you use, all right? So you just need to become familiar with each one. That way you have uh, a method that you could choose from in the future. Remember, if you, ever, if you ever have any questions with this, feel free to message me on Google Classroom or email me. This is Mr. Kizik signing off.